Yesterday, soon after Tom Brady sort of welcomed a Tampa press conference, the Boston Globe posted this headline. Tom Brady took the high road, but it's clear this was a messy divorce with the New England Patriots. Mr. Mm -hmm. Sharp, would you have mm -hmm. been okay if Tom Brady had, had even taken a little jab or maybe even a veiled shot at Bill Belichick in the 30 minutes that he did of this press conference? Skip, I'd have been fine with it, but it would have been so off-brand from Tom Brady that that's something that we would not have expected of Tom Brady. Look, we know this hurt Tom because, Skip, we can look at it one or two ways. Coach Belichick says, I believe that I can win just as many games without Tom Brady or that I can with Tom Brady, or this one probably hurts worse. I would rather lose over the next couple of years than keep Tom Brady on my roster. Now, one of those two things are true. As simple as that. And it hurts, Skip. The more accomplished a person is, the more pride he or she has. It does not matter. Now, we're talking about this in the sense of sports figures, but I don't care if you're uh, an entertainer, you're an actor, you're an accomplished musician, uh, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer. The more accomplished you are, the greater pride that you have. Tom Brady, pride is hurt. Coach Belichick was only willing to go year by year for a guy that was so accomplished that these six Super Bowls, whether or not how much credit you want to give Tom Brady, he has something to do with it. And Coach Belichick says, nah, I got one year for you. Where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he has accomplished nothing for them. Say, Tom, we got two years guaranteed for you. We got 50 million guaranteed with another 9 million in, in incentives. So it hurt. I know it hurt Tom Brady, Skip. Trust me. I went through the very same thing Tom Brady went through, Skip. I ended up leaving uh, uh, Denver after 10 years. Hadn't accomplished nearly. You know, but I had won Super Bowls, had been an all-pro, 1,000-yard seasons. And basically they say, you know what? I think we're better off without Shannon Sharp. We're going to go with what we have on the roster. Yeah, it hurt. And I could have took shots at them when I had my press conference in Baltimore. But you know what, Skip? Sometimes it's okay. You take the high road, you move on. And it's happened. It wasn't so funny, Skip. We played them in the wild card round the following year in the playoffs. We beat them. A reporter comes to me and asks Shannon, do you want to call the National Guard for your former team? I say, nah. I say, I got a lot of friends over there. And I know those, what those guys are going through because I've been on the side where we've lost the playoff game. So now is not the time for me to gloat and stand on my ped pedestal and say, see, I told you, if you had me, the outcome would have been different. So would I have had a problem with Tom Brady doing that? Absolutely not. But, Skip, that would have been so, so far off brand for Tom Brady. We, it would have shocked the very conscience of, of our being. Okay, I hear everything you just said. <laughs> and I almost concur. But I want to remind everybody, Bill Belichick went out of his way to make Tom Brady's life miserable over the last two and a half football seasons in New England. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Tom Brady took it as long as he took it. And I remain steamed that Belichick treated the GOAT that way and kept getting away with it, kept getting a pass for it, sometimes from across the debate desk on Undisputed. But the point mm -hmm. was, Tom Brady finally got steamed enough himself that if you'll remember following the 2017 season in which it ended with the Super Bowl loss 41 to 33 in Minnesota to Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles. Remember, after that, Brady was upset enough with a Belichick who obviously had benched Malcolm Butler for the whole game inexplicably to this moment. Nobody knows why. It almost felt, as I used the word, sabotage that Brady mm -hmm. was out here in L.A., not too far from here, about a mile and a half, two miles from here in Santa Monica, doing a paid right. gig at a, at a conference. Jim Gray interviewed him, and Jim Gray asked him if he feels the appropriate gratitude from the New England Patriots. And Tom Brady said, I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Shannon Sharp, that was the only <laughs> shot in all of his 20 yes. years. That was as close as he came mm -hmm. to take a shot at Bill mm -hmm. Belichick and maybe even a little bit of a shot at Robert Kraft. 
So mm -hmm. I was, I'm going to say hoping yesterday, maybe <laughs> half hoping. expecting that maybe Tom would take even a veiled shot back at Bill Belichick because Shannon, he deserved to. He had earned the right to take a little bit of shot. At least he could have said, well, in the end, Coach Belichick and I didn't say eye to eye because that's about as simply, nicely put as you could have put it. And I yeah. thought if he had taken even that simple little shot at Coach Belichick, that it would have been a great springboard into Tampa Bay, you know, Bucks Nation, where they would have said, man, this guy's on fire to get even with Bill Belichick, and now he's ours. So I was a little disappointed that Tom didn't take the high road, just the high road. He, he took no road. He, he wouldn't even touch <laughs> any question about the Patriots to the point that he said, I, I don't want to talk about the past because it's not relevant to my future. Well, that was, that, that was sort of indicative. It was reminiscent of, remember what Belichick said after they got blown out that time that year by Kansas City, Kansas City. early in the year, and uh -huh. he said, I'm on to Cincinnati. Well, Tom's Correct. on to Tampa Bay. And he even said, when he was asked about a craft comment, he said, I'm not responsible for how other people say certain things. Well, come on, Tom, give me a little bit. You know, we know what happened. It's pretty clear. It's been widely reported right. that they just dumped all over you. And in the end, you had no real choice but to say, okay, I'm on to Cincinnati. I'm on to Tampa Bay, right? Right, right. Skip, but if you look at it, when you said he should, he played the field, what he said uh, when he came out to Santa Monica and he did an interview with Jim Gray, he said he played the field. Well, people yep. plead the fifth against self-incrimination. Because here's the thing, Skip. If he lets one thing out, because it's so much, it might overflow. And then we might get an opportunity, a glimpse, to see a side of Tom Brady we've never seen and we never expected to see. So I'm not surprised that he stayed Good. as buttoned up as he, as he did. But, Skip, you remember he said, uh, he also said in Tampa, he's looking forward to be ha being happy. Skip, do you remember when Lane Johnson said, it seems like they're happy. just robots. Yeah. It seems like they're not having happy. Yeah. They're not being happy. <clears throat> Tom Brady and a lot of these other guys came out and said, well, winning is happiness. Winning Super Bowls is happiness. Ah, oh, Allah. I guess it wasn't as, as chummy and as rosy and as peachy as Tom Brady and those other guys would have led you to believe. Skip, look, there, nobody has ever won like this, but I believe two things can be true. You can have fun, know when to have fun, you can be serious, take your work, practice, meet, do all the things necessary that goes into winning and have these two things work simultaneous. But for whatever reason, Coach Belichick does not believe that. He's convinced mm -hmm. Tom. Tom, is, as the leader of the locker room, has turned around and convinced all the other guys the only happiness that we can have here is at the end of the day, we win the championship. And if we don't win the championship, we should be miserable. And he believed that. But guess what it got him, Skip? It got him out after 20 years of buying into everything that Coach Belichick was selling, all the teachings that he was preaching, I bought in. And I convinced the guys in the locker room that they should buy in also. And look what it did for me. The exact same thing it did for Lawyer Malloy, Ty Law, Richard Seymour, and every other player that came through that locker room. So Tom Brady's looking at it like, hmm. But if he, it can't, Skip. He's so TB12. He's so on brand. Button up. Doesn't seem anything bothers him. But trust me, Skip Bayless, I've been through this. I wasn't as accomplished and didn't, Skip, I spent half as long. Think about this. I spent 10 years in Denver, and I was seething when they didn't offer me a contract. Can you imagine after 20 years and all the accomplishments that Tom Brady has accomplished, and they, would do, they did this to him? He's seething. He's beyond hurt. He's beyond upset. But, Skip, let me tell you what happens. It's kind of like water at a levee. If a little bit gets over and it bursts, it's going to come overflow. And Tom Brady knows if he says one thing, Skip, I don't know if he's going to be able to contain himself and it's going to go on and on and on. And that's going to be the storyline. And he doesn't want that to be the storyline. He wants he's on to a new chapter in his life. Hey, life throws us curveball something sometimes and we have to move on. Because he says, Skip, he's going to have to doubt. The greatest, the greatest uh, 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 reason for human and animal existence is adaptability. 
If you cannot adapt, you become extinct. Tom Brady says, I'm not going to True. become extinct. I'm going to adapt. Tom okay. Brady is saying, I'm going to adapt. I'm going to go to Tampa. I'm going to hear new verbiage. I'm going to learn a new system. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with new teammates, new coaches, new fans. And I'm going to be the Tom Brady of old. And I will show you, Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say anything, but That's I will what? show you. Yep. You're the one person. It's not yet. Yes, Skip, I, he wants to prove that he can still play. But deep down inside, Skip, that if you say put that true serum in him, and say, okay, Brady, what's your motivation now? It, it's no longer the sixth round pick. It's no longer to prove that, oh, I'm going to win another Super Bowl. I want to show that 68-year-old guy that he was dead a wrong. Absolutely right. And remember, there was another line from Tom yesterday when he said, you know, for all of us, things change in our lives. And to your point, Shannon, he said, we all have to be able to e adapt and evolve. And so back mm -hmm. to your levy point, I think he's going to let his levy break on the football field next year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I believe he chose Tampa because Tampa is the losingest franchise in all of sports, you can't go into another sport in this country and find a worse career franchise than the Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> I think he also happened to notice at the last second that the Bucks have the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And Tom, being a student of NFL history, knows full well that no home team has ever played in a home uh, uh, stadium Super Bowl. So again, he's saying, right. Hey, what an opportunity I have to show Coach Belichick and Mr. Kraft, watch this. And also, yes. Shannon Sharp, I, what caught my ear during the press conference yesterday was a line from Bruce Arians who said what, what really captivated him about Tom was not only his ability on the field, but he said, this is from Bruce Arians, his leadership ability was what we need in our locker room to go where we need to go. So Arians, mm -hmm. who's obviously mm -hmm. coached Peyton and Roethlisberger and Luck and, and Carson Palmer, he gets it that leadership at that position is just as important as performance. So he's saying we needed this guy to come in and change our whole culture. And I told you that the first thing Brady asked for was not money from the Bucs. He said, okay, you want to give me $25 million? I'll take $25 million. He asked for the phone numbers of all of his offensive players, including his receivers. So he's already trying to contact them. I don't know if they're able, given the situation that we're all in right now, to actually play catch right. with each other yet. But right. again... He's, he's actually communicating. I don't know if he's FaceTiming with them, trying to get to know the routes that they like, their nuances, mm -hmm. their, their little yeah. uh, foibles and what they, how, how they like to play football. He's trying yeah. to adapt yeah. and evolve to that. And, and again, Bruce Arian said, by the way, that as soon as the season ended, they broke down tape on six or seven quarterbacks that they thought would maybe become available, and one of those was Tom Brady, mm -hmm. and Arian said, we ranked him number one of the quarterbacks available. So, again, mm -hmm. you, you're not sure about what Tom has left. I think he has a whole lot left, and I think he's going to be possessed and obsessed next year to get even with Belichick, and even though I wished he'd said it yesterday during the press conference, he's going to show it, I believe, next year on the football field. Well, in a couple of years, Skip, after he retired, probably four or five years after he retired, you'll get the TV, the TV 12 book that will come out, and you'll get an opportunity to hear. He'll put it, he'll put it in, yep. in book form, and you'll hear all the things of how he feels about Coach Belichick and how it transpired. Because, Skip, why give that in? Mm -hmm. You never give anything away for free if someone will pay you for it. Someone will pay to uh -huh. hear how it all transpired mm -hmm. over the last five years. I got that line from the Joker, the Heath Ledger movie. He said, you never give anything away for free uh -huh. if someone will pay you for it. I, I, <laughs> so, Skip, I, I, I actually, <laughs> yeah, I got that line from Shane yeah. Sharp. That's what you've taught me, actually, <laughs> yeah. But, Skip, you, the thing is, is that right. when you look at it, it's going to be it's, it's going to be a change for, 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 for Tom because he's hearing new verbiage. 
He has to learn body language. A lot of the communication between a quarterback and a wide receiver is body language, is repetition over and over and over again. So he's going to have to pick up on that. You know, Skip, it, when, I went to, when I went to Baltimore, 50 protection in Denver was one thing. It was something entirely different in Baltimore. 70 protection in Denver mm -hmm. was I was free, you know, I was blocking. And when I came to Baltimore, 70 protection, I was free to release. So there are a lot of things that, you know, okay, you get in a situation where it's second nature, third down, late in the ball game, it's second nature, and then all of a sudden, like, mm, no, that's not what that means. So he's got, a, he's got a learning curve, but Tom Brady is possessed. There's no question about that. I will tell you this, Skip. He's going to be possessed to prove, and I don't necessarily, Skip, the thing is that Tom Brady, and this is what I tell guys, look, don't get into this vendetta trying to get back at somebody. Prove yourself right, and then in the process of proving yourself right, you prove everybody that doubted you wrong. That's good enough. Okay. Okay. So one guy who has doubted Tom Brady is sitting through my camera right now named Shannon Sharp. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you again about a quote that I read in the Tampa Times this past Sunday from the great Rick Stroud, who's covered the Bucks forever and ever. And he said that yes. the Bucks, after they broke down Brady tape, they found no discernible deterioration in Tom's ability in the tape they watched from last year. You said that he was losing a lot of his ability. What, what, what yes. do you think the Bucs are going to get next year? How much of the great old Brady will the new team get next year? Well, Skip, here's the thing is, if I'm breaking someone down and I want them to come to my team, I I'm not going to put anything negative out there. I'm going to put all positive things out there. Because remember, he's been in a situation for 20 years where he probably heard more negative than positive. And the last thing you want to do, Skip, is to add to the negativity that he's trying to get away from. So you paint the rosiest and, and, and the chummiest picture you can possibly paint. Now, Skip, for me, is that when you look at Tom, you know, Jameis made a lot of plays, Skip, moving left, moving right, stepping up and throwing the ball. That's really not Tom Brady's game. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see. Now, they still have a little cap money left. I don't know where they're going to go in the draft. Do they draft a center? Do they draft a guard? Because that's the most important thing. Maybe. Skill position-wise, Skip, they're mm -hmm. fine. But you need to shore up the middle, of the, the middle of that offensive line because that's where Tom Brady is most vulnerable. So it's going to be very interesting to see once he learns the verbiage, once he understands the body language of how the guys want the ball in and out of breaks and things of that nature, Skip, does he, is he comfortable enough? Because the one thing that Tom did have with his offensive line is that mm -hmm. trust, is that, Skip, you know who, who's vulnerable. Like, okay, this guy, Von Miller's lined up over, over Cannon. I don't really like that matchup, so I'm probably going to need to slide a little left to give, you know, uh, give myself a little more time to throw this football. So all those things go into it. So it's going to be very interesting to see, Skip, but this is a young man's game. Tom Brady is going to be 43 years of age at the start of the season. I'm anxious to see how will he perform, even though he has tremendous weapons now. His Skip, he's not the same guy. And if you ask all the teams to evaluate Tom Brady properly, evaluate 2019 and evaluate moving forward, not 2019 moving backwards. If you evaluate 2019 and move forward, I'm guaranteeing you, you'll get different, different views than what's being portrayed. Well, all I know is my own view, I saw no drop off. I say Brady <laughs> will be as great next year as he was the last 20 years. And to cap this oh, off, Mr. Sharp, I'm, I'm going to remind yes. you that once again, Brady signed a two-year deal with the stipulation that the Bucks cannot use the tag on him, the franchise tag, in two years. So maybe Brady thinks he still might go somewhere else in two years and keep playing elsewhere. I don't know. Maybe he thinks he'll go back and finish at New England. I have no idea. Maybe he thinks Belichick no, will no. get fired after two years in New England. It's good, but I think for him, I think he's hell-bent on getting to 45. That, I think that would be one of his crowning achievements. Well, that's what he's always said. Play. Right. And so when you've accomplished all that, Skip, I mean, think about it. You say, okay, here's a guy that played, so 20, 23. So you talk about a guy that's going to be played 23 yep. seasons, accomplish what he's accomplished. Right. Records that will may never, ever be broken. Now, George Blander did throw a few passes uh, at the age of got 48. It. But, Skip, he was mainly a kicker at that point in time. Tom Brady position exclusively it. will be quarterback. 
Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.